Welcome back to another episode of Off the Bench, Northern Arizona Prep Sports, presented by Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Services and Cottonwood Parks and Recreation, right here on Verde Valley TV and KVNA 104.7 FM. I'm your host, Philip Catafamo. We have got a great show in store for you this week. Later in the program, we'll be joined by Bradshaw Mountain High School girls soccer coach John Sterling, who will break down the Bears' offseason plans. We'll then be joined by Prescott High School football coach Cody Collette, who will break down how he's changed his off-season workouts throughout the years but on the other side of this break we'll be joined by Prescott boys basketball coach Travis Stedman who will talk about the growth of the three-pointer in youth basketball all of that and a whole lot more coming up right here on off the bench don't go anywhere things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in Northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. Welcome back to Off the Bench. I am joined now by Prescott High School boys basketball coach Travis Stedman. Coach Stedman, welcome onto the show. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I like the show, so uh, I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you very much. We're, we're happy to have you. Um, coach, the offseason's kicking off right now. Just kind of curious, what, it, what are you doing right now to uh, sort of prepare for the upcoming basketball season right now that you've got all this off time? You know, it's funny. Usually my year kind of consists of – once February hits, I take about a month off for the NCAA tournament. And then, you know, once, uh, you know, April, May kick around, I start figuring out what we're going to do this summer. And then uh, we start hitting it heavy. We, uh, you know, we had kind of an extended season so that uh, hiatus was a lot shorter than normal. But uh, the other beauty is June is normal for us now, unlike it was last year. So we get the we get the blessing of turning around and playing. Every weekend in June, uh, we have we have practices and open gyms throughout the month of June. And uh, yeah, we're going to play hoops for the next four weeks. And it's uh, it, it's it's truly something I'm super excited about. Now, coach, I know that you were a former assistant coach at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And uh, while the uh, Eagles are a phenomenal basketball program, I got a chance to call some games before the pandemic hit for the girls basketball team, which you were an assistant coach for. Sure. Uh, I want to ask you, you said taking off some time for the NCAA tournament. I mean, do you have a specific college you root for? Was there one that you went to? I, I mean, or, you know, where, where, where's your fandom line? You know, it's funny. I went to the University of Montana and I, know, I realized that a number of your viewers probably went to NAU and that's probably not the, uh, the most exciting thing they've heard. But uh, I'm a big Sky Conference guy. Um, I root for them anytime they're there. I mean, it's the underdog deal. But, you know, outside of that, I, I root for good games. And so it, it's kind of my time to decompress and, uh, you know, enjoy watching other people play basketball where, you know, it's not as uh, not as on the line and my heart's not pounding nearly as badly as it would be if I was on that bench. So, well, I, I keep asking about the NCAA, but I'm curious now, uh, is there any coach that you kind of look up to who's in the NCAA that you go, this is the guy that I want my program to be modeled after after? You know, I, I, I've kind of, there's not one specific guy. We, I dabble and I, I take from all kinds of different programs. I love the Colgate program. They, uh, what they do and how they, you know, how they handle their offense. I, I like the energy that, uh, that uh, they had at Loyola Chicago. And now he's, I think he's at Texas tech now, but uh, I really like, I, you know, I kind of, you know, it's a, it's a long list of people that I've, you know, I've taken from, stolen from. And uh, I think that's the beauty of coaching is uh, you're able to do that. And and nobody really frowns upon it too badly. So, yeah, it's uh, not the same way for broadcast. If you steal somebody's stuff, <laughs> you pretty much get found out. So uh, nobody look up Mike Green. But anyway, um, uh, Coach uh, Senior Tucker uh, Coning was awarded uh, the Can Do Male Athlete of the, uh, the Year Award, which is given out by Prescott High School. 
Uh, you've had Tucker on your squad for about two years now. Um, I mean, he's a senior, obviously he's graduating this year, but I mean, what does it mean for you to get a guy like that, uh, to win an award like that? And, uh, and, and what did Tucker mean to this program, uh, during those, those years he played? He, he's a real special case. And I mean that, I mean that in the sense that he was a transfer student. He went to millennium uh, when he was a, I think a freshman and sophomore. And usually Prescott's a interesting town. They don't, they don't typically take well athletically to kids who didn't grow up here and didn't, didn't play with each other when they were in fourth, fifth and sixth grade and eighth grade and moving into the high school. And so he was one of the few kids that I've ever seen in this community come right in with open arms, be accepted. And his, his ability to, to uh, be part of something and not, not have anything diminish from him is incredible. Like he, uh, he's a real special kid. And honestly, it was, it was a true pleasure to have him as part of the program and believe it or not, he uh, hadn't picked up a basketball since he was in seventh grade. Wow. And uh, so the, the athletic ability was there as well. Um, but him as a person trumps everything that he does uh, anywhere else. And he's, he's got a real, real tremendously bright future because uh, that that's going to continue going with him. Uh, well, coming back now to the current team coach, as you mentioned, the summer is kicked off. You guys are playing basketball right now in the month of June. Uh, how have those summer workouts been? Have you guys participated in any tournaments, any open gyms, anything to that extent? And if so, how have they been going? You know, we, uh, we get a couple of three practices in a week um, and we mix it up with, with an open gym style and a, and a standard issue practice style. That way it's, you know, for everybody's, you know, mental attrition, it's kind of nice to, to keep things light and fresh. Um, and then we end every week with a tournament. Uh, you know, we had been at uh, Campo Verde, which is down in Gilbert, um, um, had some good success there with the varsity and JV teams. Um, the uh, uh, we're at GCU, um, had a really tough competition there at GCU. And uh, coming up this week, um, I believe this is a Friday. I think we are at the section seven which is something that uh, the, it's a live viewing period for the recruiting process. And it's the one time that college coaches can watch high school basketball in the summertime. And it's a super cool experience. We're going to be at the, uh, at the state farm stadium down in Glendale and they have 11 courts under the roof of the state farm stadium. And there's just, there's just basketball all weekend. It's, it's a Thursday through Saturday event or sorry, a Friday through Sunday event. And I mean, there's there's teams from California, from Nevada, from Texas, from Washington, um, all under one roof, all playing basketball in a tournament style with Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA college coaches there. So it'll be a great experience. So it is an incredible experience. I mean, we we've a couple coaches and I have we've talked uh, in different instances, and it's it's kind of not a secret that you know getting recruited in high school is is tough, uh, especially when you play certain sports, football, uh, baseball, uh, obviously baseball and softball have the club aspect, volleyball as well. Uh, basketball does have club too. Um, but it is really hard to be seen when you live in rural Arizona, because a lot of people kind of focus their attention more towards uh, Maricopa County or even in the Tucson area. So this provides an opportunity for your guys and, and maybe some other teams up here in Northern Arizona to get that exposure in front of those coaches. Yeah, definitely. And the other thing is, with the equation of recruiting, I mean, club basketball, high school basketball, it all has its, it all has its fit in the whole equation of, of being recruited. And the problem is when you live in a rural area, it gets shaded to one side rather than both sides. And it makes it a little more difficult, but the beauty of an event like this, not only is it, is it a tremendous opportunity? It's incredibly run. It's in, in, incredibly well thought out. And the group that does it, it it's, it's done right. They, they, they make sure that it's a classy event that people are going to want to go to. And it's not, it's not something that, uh, that you're going to show up to and, and not be excited about as a fan, as a coach, as a player. So it, uh, it, it's really going to be a big difference for uh, a difference maker for these kids. 
Again, we are speaking with Travis Stedman. He is the boys basketball coach over at Prescott High School. Uh, coach, we talked about some of those summer tournaments and open gyms. And obviously, uh, you said Section 7, which is a huge uh, basketball tournament down at uh, 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 State Farm Stadium. I almost called. No, it's a uh, no, it is State Farm Stadium. I'm correct. Yeah, I know. I never I remember know. either. <laughs> it's, University of Phoenix Stadium. Uh, it's, it's like four different names, but it is at State Farm Stadium um, with all of those going on. And of course, your usual practices. What is one area that and without giving too much strategy away, of course, but what is one area that you would like to see your team improve on from last year going into this season? You know, honestly, it, it, every year, every year is exactly, if you ask me that next year, you asked me that five years ago, my, my answer is going to be exactly the same. It's on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, it's, it's the putting in the effort on that end of the floor, regardless of what our scheme is, what our, what our, uh, our scattering report looks like the effort on the defensive end of the floor. And that's just something that, you know, when you go play pickup, a basketball that's not something you really uh take into account a ton of and so you know it's all about putting the putting the ball in the hoop and granted that's that's something i love doing personally but you got to get stops and you got to be able to you got to be able to sit in front of the guy that you're defending and make sure he you're doing your job so he doesn't score so it uh it's always going to be the same and we're gonna we're gonna harken back to it and that's that's just how we're going to be successful uh, for incoming fourth graders and, uh, through eighth grade, so four, five, six, seven, and eight, uh, Prescott High School is hosting their Badger Basketball uh, Youth Camp on July. And again, this is July 21st to July 23rd. Uh, Coach, can you just give us some more details about that and what kids who participate in that camp can expect? Uh, you, you can expect fun. I mean, we uh, – we, I, this is sounds super cheesy, but we, we keep it fun, but we keep it fundamental as well. So it's, you know, the old classic adage, we put the fun in fundamentals. I would never say that and feel good about it, but it's, uh, it, it's now, and now it's documented. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. Thank you. Internet. But yeah, the, uh, you know, the thing is we, we want to make sure that the kids have a great time because ultimately when you're talking about youth sports, regardless of the sport as a youth coach or somebody coaching youth kids, your job is to make sure that they want to keep playing that sport. So when they get done that week, I want them to know, man, I love basketball. I want to come back. I want to keep doing this. And so, you know, we're going to sprinkle in stuff that, uh, that we talk about stuff that's important to our program. We're going to sprinkle I mean, our guys are going to be there. Um, I mean, we have some returning varsity kids that a lot of the kids in this community really look up to. They're going to be there on the coaching staff, helping out. And so it'll be a fun week and the kids will have a really good time. Yeah. And that's definitely, obviously, you know, you're teaching the fundamentals for these kids who may be picking up a basketball for the first time, or really just want to improve their basketball IQ. Um, I saw some decision-making things were included in, in the summer camp, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is great. Uh, and, and also, like you just said, your guys are getting an opportunity to go out there and work with these kids. It gives them a glimpse at what they used to be like a few years ago and uh, you know, them sort of learning the game and, and maybe in a lot of ways coach them kind of, brushing up on some of their fundamentals and, 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 and working on some things as well. It's crazy. The, uh, the dichotomy of, of being a kid, you know, a lot of times you're just used to being the player. And then when you put them in charge of something, <laughs> then, then the responsibility gets put on their hat and they uh, they're like, Oh, wow, this isn't nearly as easy. Or, you know, it's like, Oh man, I forgot that. Yeah. When I was, nine years old, I was a pain in the butt too. I didn't think about that. How do I handle this? How did you handle this coach? But it's uh, it, it's a really good experience. And it's funny. We have co we have players, former players that uh, have been participants of the camp. I mean, we have the, I, I'll never forget. We have the Jex brothers. We have a set of twins, uh, Logan and Parker. And I remember them being, they got in early because they had an older brother that, uh, that participated, they got in in like second or third grade and they were there. And I just remember those kids growing up being part of the program. And it's, it's a really cool thing. And now they get to be part of it as a coach. And it's uh, it's just this full circle thing that, that we love about the sport. So it very much is a full circle thing. I mean, you just said it, those, those two boys are playing on your team right now and you saw them in the beginning and, and, and here they are now uh, uh, coach. I got a bit of a, an interesting question for you. It's kind of a trend that I've been noticing. Um, you, you talk about pickup basketball. I was playing pickup basketball a couple of weeks ago at the uh, at, at my local gymnasium, and uh, I was playing. I happened to be playing a couple guys my age. I'm 25, or a couple guys my age, but there were a lot more younger kids, probably like high school age, more than likely some of your players, uh, or at least the age of your players, I should say. Um, and 
everyone was shooting three pointers. I, I don't know what has been going on with youth basketball, but everybody wants to be a three point shooter. As somebody who was five six until about eighth grade, uh, I was always shooting the basketball because I could never. I had no inside game at all. And then in high school, I stayed at about five eight, so I really had no inside game. And then when I got into college, I stopped playing because I stopped playing after my sophomore year. But what was weird is everybody was just settling for three pointers. Now, I know a lot of people want to put blame on Steph Curry, but in the last 10 years, Steph Curry drafted in 2010. He's made an impact in the league for a very long time. I just wanted to get, you know, you obviously handle a youth camp. You have been a youth coach. You've seen these kids. Have you noticed this trend? Is it a good trend? Is it a bad trend? Where are you on the uh, live or die by the three point line is what my dad would say. The uh, it's funny when you're when you're discussing organized basketball, I'm I'm pro threes. I'm pro jump shots. I'm pro get the ball up and get it up to the hoop as quickly as possible. And if you miss crash the board, the uh, as a as a, a former shooter whose arm hurts for as many jump shots as he's taken his entire life. Um, I love the I love the fact. Um, yeah, put the ball in the hoop, get those three points. At the, uh, you know, at the rec level, I think it's more, more of a sign of, uh, man, I don't really want to run that far. <laughs> it's the three point line so much closer when you're coming back on the defensive end of the floor, you know, it's so much closer than going all the way into the paint and man, the amount of effort that you have to have to dribble to get into the paint is different. So I think there's a, a little bit of difference, but honestly, there's a huge, huge trend going that direction. I mean, we shoot a, a, a colossal amount of threes. Uh, I know if you watch our, watch our conference, the uh, uh, a good portion of the guys in our conference have the same mentality, maybe not so much one way or the other, but they have the same mentality and it's kind of sweeping the, uh, the, the direction because people are just better shooters. It's gotten to the point too, where the, uh, the trend has created this better shooter mentality. So, I mean, shoot, my son's 11. And if you go in my backyard right now, he's probably playing basketball and he's probably chucking the ball up from 25 feet and I'll uh, obviously explain to him like, Hey man, you can barely lift the ball or see the hoop from that far out. He looks at you and it's crazy and he'll knock down four in a row. So it's just, it's just one of those things that at a, at a younger age, you know, before when you and I were playing, our dads were yelling at us, like we're working on drop steps and jump hooks and elbow jumpers and uh, making sure we can make our free throws. I you know? hook my dad's favorite, the sky <laughs> hook. He always taught me the sky hook. Every time we play horse, he knew I couldn't hit the sky hook, but he would do it anyway, just to, just to beat me. Yeah, perfect. Exactly. And it's, uh, yeah, I'll just remember my dad's up and under. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's like when you're, when you're a slow, unathletic basketball player, you know, the three pointer at this point, at least in my opinion, you know, for me personally, I can't speak for everybody, but for me personally, it's been a, a, a lifesaver. <laughs> so yeah, John Barry, Bob Sura, they're all, they're all just my idols for just uh, unathletic guys who, who just shoot three pointers. But uh, again, we were speaking with Prescott high school boys, basketball coach, Travis Stedman, uh, the Badgers will be hosting their uh, basketball youth camp July 21st through the 23rd at the high school. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, coach can kids still, kids obviously can still sign up. Uh, where can they, go for more information about the camp if they go to prescott badger basketball.com they can sign up online and pay online and get it all scored away so okay so definitely go check out the uh, badger website badger basketball.com uh, to get all of that information about the camp coming up again that is july 21st through the 23rd coach i want to thank you very much for coming on the uh, on the show i know we're getting so close to the start of basketball season although it does feel very far away because it's not till november uh but i know you're excited to get back out on the floor and i want to thank you very much for coming on uh, to talk about your off-season plans yeah, absolutely. It was my pleasure. I, uh, as my wife says, I enjoy hearing myself talk. So any opportunity I have to do that is uh, good for me, maybe not good for everybody else, but uh, I did appreciate it. As do I. There's a uh, earphone in my ear right now that's feeding me my, my beautiful voice. But uh, Coach Stedman, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming on. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will be joined by Bradshaw Mountain Girls soccer coach John Sterling right here on Off the Bench. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. Welcome back to Off the Bench, Northern Arizona Prep Sports. I am joined now by Bradshaw Mountain High School girls soccer coach, John Sterling. Coach Sterling, welcome onto the show. Thanks, sir. Nice to meet you. Glad to be here. Nice to meet you as well, and we're happy to have you uh, on the show as well. Um, obviously, the offseason has kicked off for everybody here in Northern Arizona and throughout the entire state. Uh, so, Coach, I want to ask just in general, how has your offseason been going? What has it consisted of, and uh, are you having any fun? Oh, we're always having fun. That's the key. If the kids are having fun, they're learning. So um, we kicked off um, last Tuesday, last last Tuesday, because Monday was a holiday. So we kicked off on Tuesday. I was still out of town, but my assistants handle it. Um, very happy with the job they did while I was gone. Um, and we go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, three nights a week, a um, couple hours a night. We do uh, two nights a week. We're in the weight room. So we're in the weight room um, Mondays and Thursdays. We spend about a half an hour, 45 minutes in there. Then they come outside. And in the summer, we like to focus primarily on technical work. So um, tactics, I can teach them um, as we get into the season because I don't know who exactly is going to make the team. So we like to focus on the technical aspect of the game in the summer, get the, you know, get the ball skills sharper, start, start to get them a little fitter. And then hopefully they'll carry that on through the fall, either with continued weight work or continued cardio work. Some of them play club ball. So that takes care of the cardio, but we have, we have several uh, multi-sport athletes. So they kind of do a different thing, which I enjoy. I like to see them do different sports um, whether they're running cross country or doing volleyball. So, um, you know, those girls obviously are, are getting the fitness aspect of it, but the ones that aren't, we try and keep the weight room available to them. And, and we might do some light technical work in the fall, but most of it we try and it's fitness, um, to prevent injuries when we get there. So that's basically how we do that. Yeah, and I think that definitely makes sense. As Coach Sterling just said, the uh, the, the program has been holding uh, uh, sort of training sessions, basically, like you just said, just sort of focusing on the techniques and focusing on different aspects of that. Uh, that has been going on at the high school for incoming uh, ninth through 12th graders or current students right. as well. Um, like you said, Coach, the focus being more mainly on, on just that technical aspect. And do you feel that, you know, preparing in the summer and, you know, sort of brushing up on those small things a lead into a much more successful soccer season. Oh, definitely. When we, the, the, when we have better participation in the summer, we typically see a better um, season throughout the year um, because it, it just helps it, you know, they need that technical work. A lot of girls will go on to club and so they're getting some of that, but the ones that don't, you know, the skills you have, you don't have that we may give into put into them, then they'll, they'll, they'll lose some of that, but they'll pick it up much quicker instead of just starting from scratch with them in November. So um, yeah, it's always nice to have, have a good turnout. And we've had, I think we've averaged like 18 girls a night this year, which is awesome. It's the best we've ever had. Um, and there's a lot of other aspects to it. You know, there's team bonding and things like that that go on in the summer. So um, and we got a great group of captains who are, are helping that. Um, so they get to know each other now so that when they get here in the fall and the winter, that's already taken care of. We don't have to deal with that at all. So, yeah, very much so. I, I, it makes complete and total sense. I do want to ask though, coach, you know, throughout your years of coaching, what, uh, sort of techniques have you picked up? Do you, have you changed your approach to training in the summer? Was it always technique focused, but, uh, you know, or, or did you change that at some point? How has, how have you evolved your off season plan? 
Oh man. Um, you know, the, the first year I was here, it was get to know the kids and, and, and the girls and, and just figure out what I was doing. So yeah, it's evolved a lot. And I, I spend a lot of my off season, um, either in training or, um, like right now I'm, I'm getting a certificate in different, the differential learning system, which is a, a way of talks about how the brain works in coordination with the muscles in the body. So, um, we're adding some of those things in now. Um, and it's just, I'm always, I'm always evolving. I'm, I, the girls never see the same thing year after year. Um, it's, it's been technique oriented, but that has changed how we apply those rules and how we apply the training and the the methodology. So the methodology changes. I recently went down and attended the USSF C licensing class, which was USSF has changed their licensing over the last several years. And and the, the, the new methodology that, that they're using is very similar to what is done in Europe. And it, it's very player centric and it's very, uh, it's, it's a lot less coach, driving it it's letting them learn on their own and guiding them to that learning so it's um so those are the things i do in the off season so yeah it's i'm always changing and, and that's and got sometimes to- they tell, oh i'm sorry sometimes they tell me i'm nuts and it doesn't work and the girls don't like it and we throw it away and you know i listen to them if, if they're learning from it and they're gaining knowledge from it they 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 like it and we keep going with it no, and I think that makes uh, total sense. You know, I, I would assume as a coach, you are all, always looking for new ways to, to uh, fix technique or fix a, a way that yep. you train or a way that you talk to co- players or a way that you handle your off-season program. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's going to be exciting for you now to get an opportunity to see all those changes from when uh, you first started to, to where you're at now. Um, like I mentioned, uh, you have seen uh, basically your incoming freshmen and uh, through your seniors, so ninth through 12th grade, your JV and your varsity essentially mm-hmm. – um, is there a particular area where incoming freshmen struggle? I know, like you said, you, you do have some players who come in with experience. Obviously, there are kids who are playing soccer since they're like five years old. Um, but is there, even in those skilled players, is there an aspect where an incoming freshman comes in and is like, okay, there's this area that they really need work in? You know, it's the it's all over the board with with us at Bradshaw because we have players that – maybe who have only played middle school soccer or, and they are those advanced players. So um, probably the biggest thing we work on is just their, their first touch and getting that down. And that we also have a habit or, or they have a habit of the players who come to us are generally the best players on the team. When we have players come in from say club ball, those players tend to want to take over and do everything on their own and soccer is a team sport. So turning them from an individual into a team player um, takes a lot of work sometimes. And we do that. Um, you know, they want to, they want to get the ball on their foot and never give it up. And they, they try and keep it. They try and do everything. And, you know, you just tell them you can do that in your club games, but you're playing against, you know, basically all-star teams at the high school level. And, you know, that, that, those players are not going to allow you to do that. So, that's probably the biggest thing that, that we work with. And that's almost more of a mental thing, just getting them to break those habits. But other than that, the first touch that I mentioned, getting that improved and getting them to work with those things and, and, and getting that down because that's, that's huge in the high school game. And it's, it's so important because if it's not spot on, when you go to play a Prescott or a flag staff, they're going to eat you alive if that ball is not stuck to your feet. Yeah, we're, we're very familiar with uh, Coach Jones' Eagles up in Flagstaff and Coach Gimitano, <laughs> your crosstown rival at Prescott High School, talk, spoke to yeah. both of them multiple times. Uh, uh, but, Coach, uh, I, I want to ask, let's even take it a step further. How about that transition from JV to varsity? That the speed and the tempo of the game coming in as a freshman is different from when you're playing middle school. But when you go from JV to varsity, again, the, the tempo is completely different. So what do you guys do to sort of help ease that transition? Um throw them into the deep end and make them swim. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know, um, ideally what I like to do is I don't like to throw people straight into the varsity game, but sometimes they have enough skill and talent that we do that. So, um, but ideally the, the thing to do is, is to get them into it. If you know that this player has the ability to make the varsity in say one or two years, put them on the bench and let them play a game either when we get to the postseason or we even during the regular season, put them into a game that we know we're going to go into. That's a lower level team that we're playing and let them get experience because 
It is. It's amazing how much faster the JV, the varsity game is over the JV. It's just, and girls, and that's one of the things we always talk about is what was the biggest impression on you as a young player, when we talk early in the season, we ask our, our captains or our, our senior players to say, what was the biggest thing that, that you had to, to settle, you know, to learn? And they always say the game is so much faster. It's so much more physical, um, you know, so um, we get those senior players to impress it on the younger ones. You know, it's just the speed and, the, and not only that, but the physicality of the game is so it's, it's very, very physical and you don't see a lot of it unless you're standing right there on the field with it. So yeah, it is a, it is a much, much faster game. So that, and that's what they all, they all go. We don't even have to prompt them to say that they all say that without a doubt. It's every one of them. Yeah. And last week's show, I got a chance to speak with uh, AIA official Scott Hansen about sort of just the transition of, of refereeing a JV basketball game. Oh, man compared to a, a varsity basketball game and, yeah. and played both. I, I uh, you know, the, the, it's, there's definitely a difference. And, and like you said, a lot of those young players go, yeah, it was a tough transition. And of course it is. Uh, again, yeah. we are speaking with Bradshaw Mountain High School girls soccer coach, John Sterling. The Bears have been holding uh, summer workouts for incoming ninth through 12th graders and current students. Uh, if you're, if you want any more information about that, if you're a player or, uh, you know, you're looking to join the soccer team, contact coach Sterling, go visit the Bradshaw Mountain website. Uh, and, and go to their athletics page and, and contact Coach Sterling for more information. Um, coach, I, I want to ask you, is there a model? Is there any kind of coach or program, whether it be at the collegiate level or the high school level or maybe even the professional level, that you kind of look at and go, I'd like my program to reflect that? You know, I draw from, I draw from all of them. I, I, uh, because of my, my normal daily job, I, I get to travel quite often. And when I go to another city, if there's a college within walking or driving distance of my hotel, I will contact that coach and I'll go sit down and talk to him Okay. and just ask him how he does things. What do you do? What's working today? What, you know, versus what didn't work a year ago or two years ago. So, um, you know, I could sit here and say, well, I, you know, I draw on Benitez or Klopp or, you know, those guys, but I really, I look at the program that is doing well. And then I look at what, they're doing. So whether it's, um, you know, whether it's this differential learning system, which I just learned about not that long ago, um, the Chelsea manager uses it. So, and I just learned that Jurgen Klopp with Liverpool uses it. So I'm, I'm learning about that and I like some of the methodology. So, um, you know, I've, in the past, I've talked to, you know, Mike Panaglione here. He and I, you know, he's team messaged me every now and then on, you know, if we had a big win or, and I'd talk to him on the sidelines or run into him at a game somewhere and just pick his brain a little bit. So, um, or my own son played in the Valley for Sereno and his coach, um, Diego Walsh was an assistant at GCU. Well, we had him come up and run some sessions for us just to watch, you know? So I really, I really don't have one particular one that I, I draw from. I, I kind of just look at the whole landscape and, take bits and pieces from all of these, but I do try and provide the players with a college like atmosphere because so many of them say they want to get there. Well, then this is what your off season is going to look like. Let's do that. This is what your in season is going to look like. Let's do that. So I try and incorporate things that I know those coaches do. I know these guys work, these kids all, you know, when I was on recruiting visits with my own son, you know, I'm, I learned what they did in the off season. So it's like, all right, you guys are going to work in the off season in the weight room, you know? Yeah. So just those little things and picking those things up from, from all of those things. So it really is just a hodgepodge of, of everybody that I've talked to and learned from. And that's good. I, I've, I asked uh, coach Stedman just a few minutes ago, that same exact question. And uh, it's interesting, your take on it being that you're, you're more collaborative, you know, and it's not to say that coaches are not collaborative. I, I want to, I don't want to make that uh, assumption because a lot of coaches work very, very well together, regardless of what schools they coach at. But for you right. saying you play against somebody or, you know, you know, you know of somebody and you go, OK, well, they do this really well. I want to find out what that is so that I can incorporate it into my training, into my team's uh, preparation. Right. Like said, these girls want to play at the college level. So why not get them ready now while they're in high school? Exactly. To get that glimpse uh, of the college level. Same thing here with broadcasting. Matt Showalter, who is the voice of Bradshaw Mountain High School for uh, the football team. I have spoken with Matt numerous times about technique, about delivery. Uh, and, and it's just, it's collaborative. We're just learning. Right. From you. It's you're not blatantly stealing anything. You, you're just, you're just nope. learning. And, and I think that's a great approach to coaching uh, because yeah. 
coaching in itself is is a is a learning as well. You're learning what works and what doesn't. And exactly. Uh, and speaking of what works and what doesn't, Coach, I'm curious, uh, where is one area that you would like to see this team improve? I know we're a little ways away from the start of the season, um, but where is a particular area you would like to see that your team improve going into the upcoming season? we got to get better at closing out games and holding on to leads, bottom line. I, we, we, can, we can get a lead, um, but it, it's holding that lead and, and being soccer smart in those last five minutes. You know, I mean – let's not cheat, but let's waste time within the confines of the, the rules. Let's, instead of running to a ball and getting it back in as fast as we can, let's maybe walk to it or jog to it, or, you know, let's, let's, um, let's not put the ball in a dangerous position on the pitch where, oh my God, let's, let's not drop it back to our goalkeeper when their forwards are pressing high and hard and fast in, in a minute to try and get that equalizer. So, you know, it's, it's things like that that we really need to work on. And it's, it's basically just soccer smarts, um, getting the kids to watch the game more and learn, learn those things. And we try and do those things in scrimmages and just get those habits ingrained. You know, when, when the ball goes out of bounds and we're early in a game and we're behind, you got to sprint to that ball, get it back into play as fast as you can. You don't walk to it, you know. So um, soccer smarts, really, and, and, and that leads to closing out the game in a smart fashion. Yeah, burning a, a time management for a, in a lot of ways in high school sports is very difficult. I, I can't yeah. even tell you how many, not even just high school sports, but at the college level and also at the professional level where you see, you know, I guess more, the example I'll use is basketball where, you know, a guy will, will dribble a basketball for, you know, three to four seconds and take a shot when he could have waited another 15 to 16, got a better shot yeah. and, and, and closed out the game, like you just said, or, or even just burn more time off the clock. Uh, to, to sort of secure a victory. But uh, right. uh, coach, uh, what uh, we I just got one last question for you. I just want to know what else is coming up in the off season. Like I mentioned, you're still doing your training uh, up until July. Again, visit the Bradshaw Mountain High School website, their athletics page for more information on what is going on with the girls soccer team regarding summer workouts. But coach, before we let you go, I'll stop rambling. What else you got for the rest of the off season? Um, you know, for this summer, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Um, the captains have been tasked and my ambassadors, we have an ambassador program for girls who are younger, um, like my so freshmen and sophomores, we make them ambassadors and they progress into the captain program eventually, but, um, they will be doing some bonding exercises with the girls. Um, whether that's planning a hike or a sleepover or, you know, a day at the beach or the lake, or they've gone, you know, they've all gotten together and went to the water parks in Phoenix or, um, so that'll be going on. And like I said, we'll continue what we're doing. We get into the fall being a winter sport. We'll continue with, uh, in the past, we've always done one day of indoor, um, but after our, our season last year, we're going to, we're going to spend the fall in the weight room and try and get the girls stronger to hopefully ward off some injuries. And, uh, cause until last year, we never really had any injury issues, but I think that the way the game is going and it's much more physical and some of the tactics that are being used, it, it's brought on some injuries for us. So we're going to keep them in the weight room this fall, as many as of them as we can. Um, I don't know that we'll really focus on a lot of the technical aspects in the fall because, they're in school and some of them are playing clubs. So it's primarily going to be weight room stuff. And then I'm sure there'll be some bonding activities and, and we have a monthly meeting and, and things like that. So that's where we're going to go and can't wait for, I think it's November 1st this year. So. Yeah. Well, we're getting very, very close to the start of winter sports season. Or I should, uh, even before that, the start of fall season, it'll be here before yeah. any know it. But uh, I do want to thank Bradshaw Mountain High School girls soccer coach, John Sterling for coming on the program, sir. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much, Philip. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Prescott High School football and wrestling coach Cody Collette. Stay with us here on Off the Bench. Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you.
Welcome back to Off the Bench. I am joined now by a familiar face to the program. He is Prescott High School's football coach and wrestling coach. This is Cody Collette. Coach Collette, welcome back onto the show. Thank you so much for having me, Philip. I really appreciate it. Well, we are always happy to have you back on the program. Uh, Offseason has kicked off officially for the Prescott Badgers. What have you been up to, Coach? You doing anything fun over the offseason? I know you've done a lot of camps and stuff, which we will get to. But how is Coach Collette this offseason? Fantastic. I'm getting to coach every day. I don't have my kids in groups of nine. Um, you know, we're getting 50, 60 kids in the weight room every day, which is about where we're usually at this time of year. Uh, kids are working hard and, and getting better every single day. We've had some passing leagues. Uh, it's just been nice to be a little bit more normal. Obviously, there's uh, you still have some protocols and things like that in place. But um, last summer was tough. You, you have We have a ton of kids in our program and you only get to see a certain number. I had to rotate my coaches or we would have been here for 12 hours a day uh, since we could only do the groups of nine and we couldn't do any weight room stuff. Um, that's probably been the biggest thing is trying to get back in and, and make up for those things strength wise. I think actually skill wise, because last summer we did so much in the off season, we did so much skill development and scheme development. We've had less mental errors. Now we got to fix uh our kids are definitely getting stronger, but anytime you miss that significant portion of lifting, obviously I would say there's some deficiencies in the strength department. Um, you know, guys that should be maybe at junior strength, they're a little bit, you know, mid sophomore to late sophomore year strength. And we're trying to, to make up those gains right now is what we're trying to do. And that made a lot of sense. Uh, of course it did, because just like you talked about it uh, during the pandemic, during the off season workouts, even during the season, you had to operate at such a small capacity. Like you said, small groups of nine with a bunch of kids like that. You know, it's, it's great. Like you said, a lot of the mental errors were gone, but the physicality and the strength wasn't there because they did not get a chance to work out at the gym and they were doing a lot of their working out and a lot of their more strenuous season preparation as we got closer and closer to the season. Um, but I do want to ask coach, you know, despite all the negatives with the, uh, with COVID, was there anything you took away from those smaller workouts where you go, okay, this actually kind of worked and maybe we're going to start implementing this a little more. Absolutely. I think there was definitely some positives out of it. The one I would say that I'm going to do, and this would sound like would have sounded absolute crazy talk to, you know, 27, 28 year old coach Colette, but we're going to start doing our film sessions on Saturday mornings. Virtually we have, as you know, in the grand Canyon region, we have so many games where the kids are going to get back at one, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, most of our road games, other than if we play Bradshaw or Mingus away, and usually it's only one of those. So four out of our five road games are, are quite a trek. Um, we're going to do a lot of our film sessions virtually and maybe even do um, some rehabilitation type stuff, some yoga type things. Uh, you can do that on the video screen in, in, in your own home. The coaches will come in and we'll do our film work and everything. But I, I think that's going to really help for the kids. And I, I think it's nice to not have to be back in on Saturday morning, you know, seven hours after you just finished the ball game or got home from the ball game. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, I didn't play football in high school, but I know that that video aspect is very, very important. And like you said, it's probably a lot easier to get a bunch of high school kids on a Zoom call when they're at home as opposed to going, okay, guys, you got to get up and everybody's going to come down to the high school and we're going to watch some film. So uh, I, I agree. I think the, the, the virtual aspect is, is, is very good. I'm excited about that. Used to, you know, used to be they would come in because you had breakfast burritos or, or whatever. The teenage boys will come in to eat, no question. But uh, yeah, we're going to do it that way, and I think it's going to be very helpful. Uh, the Prescott Badgers have gotten an opportunity to hold uh, a couple camps uh, earlier this summer. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about spring ball and 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 whatnot when we get closer to uh, some of the high school stuff. But um, uh, seventh and eighth graders did get an opportunity to uh, uh, participate in the Badger Skills Camp in April, and I believe the tail end or early part of May. Uh, but coach, I, I wanted I'm I'm curious how was the uh, uh, the turnout? That's obviously your youth uh, area. A lot of those kids are probably looking to go to Prescott High School. Uh, uh, if they don't decide to go to Bradshaw, your crosstown rival, but uh, you know, you get an opportunity kind of to look at what's coming up. These kids get an opportunity to, to be coached at the high school level for the most part. So I want to ask, you know, how was the reception and what, uh, what did, what did the camp consist of? It was very good. Uh, we uh, did a little bit differently this year. We kind of slow played because we did six weeks of that on Fridays. Um, and, and we had good numbers. Obviously there's a lot of kids and I want this. There was a lot of kids in track at mile high, 
junior high that weren't there uh, for parts of it. Uh, there, this is a huge baseball town, but still we probably averaged about 30, 35 kids, which for just the seventh and eighth graders, I was very encouraged with. Um, did a lot of technique stuff. Um, I'm heads up certified. I'm safe football certified. Uh, football is, uh, is the, I believe the greatest game in the world and I want to keep it as safe as possible while being able to play it with the physicality it was meant to be played. And there's a ton of stuff with blocking and safe football that I've learned through the years and our heads up stuff. We spent a, a lot of time doing that stuff. We didn't really, we implemented a few things offensively and defensively, but it was really technique driven. Um, those type of things, learning how to play the game the correct way um, was an emphasis of the camp. I thought it went really, really well. Uh, I am, I never uh, want to get in the, the hype machine thing, uh, but we have a couple freshmen that I think can be pretty special. Um, okay. So I, I won't, Go into any more detail than that just yet, but uh, we got a couple incoming freshmen that I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about. Well, I want you to know, Coach, I'm going to be poking you for information throughout the football season, so we're going to be talking about those freshmen at some point. But uh, uh, we'll we'll keep it hush hush for now, and we're excited to see uh, the Badgers get out on the field uh, uh, relatively soon. We're still obviously a couple months away, but we're getting closer and closer. September third is the uh, road opener for the Prescott. Incidentally, Badgers. I love that they decided to push it back two weeks. That's fabulous. Uh, I'm excited that we had a couple seasons there where we started August 17th and it's like, we played 30% of our games. We're not even in Labor Day yet. That was just craziness to me. So I really enjoy the fact that, you know, the regular season won't end until November 12th. Um, I'm excited about that change. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah, a great change. Like I said, the first game of the season for the Badgers is on the road at Glendale. Uh, they'll be taking on the Cardinals uh, at, at Glendale, like I said, on September 3rd. Um, but, Coach, speaking of your high school team, obviously spring football got kicked off uh, at spring football camps. I know you guys played a few games. How did spring football go in general? And like you mentioned, you've got a couple new faces that you're excited about. What did these uh, – what did spring sp – uh, oh, my goodness. What did spring football teach you about your team going into next season? Kind of a little bit what I what I got into you with earlier. I think from a scheme point of view, we're ahead of where we've been in the past. We we didn't have a lot of mental errors. Now, getting us to the strength point to be able to execute some of those things and the speed point to be able to execute some of those things uh, because we haven't had as much weight room time and conditioning time uh, would be the biggest aspect. In terms of mental errors, we didn't have very many. We had very few missed blocking assignments and things like that. Uh, where I would say we're deficient is, is trying to get the, that strength level up to where it needs to be. And we have some that were able to do some conditioning and some and strength training and some that were not. So uh, I, I would say we're ahead in one area and a little bit behind in the other area. So uh, that's what we're trying to work out right now. Uh, but still, of course, holding those workout sessions and those weight training sessions as well. Um, I do want to ask, Coach, for any uh, uh, players who might be listening or, or want more information, maybe some, some parents who are just looking for more info about any other camps or any other offseason programs for the football team that are going on, uh, where should they go and what are some of those things that might be coming up soon? Absolutely. I was running around like crazy yesterday on Wednesdays. I double booked myself a little bit because we had a couple teams coming over here for passing league. Um, and simultaneously, we had a uh, – the seventh through eight, another youth camp that we were doing. So I was, our assistants were kind of coaching most of the seven on seven and I was running around uh, both places, but we have two more Wednesdays, the 16th and the 23rd. Um, it's $10 for all four days of camp, five to seven. If anything, that's the cheapest babysitting you'll ever find in the history of the world. Um, and we've been doing some bait strength and skills camp. We've been learning some stuff in the weight room, tried to work through our progression, um, um, been fortunate our district paid for me to become a USA weightlifting um, certified sport performance coach. So I uh, kind of walked them through our progression in the power clean, um, did some stuff technique wise, and then we got out to the field and did some things on that end as well. So uh, that was been a lot of fun getting out thrown with our guys. We'll continue our weights program um, all the way until football camp, which is July 26th through the 29th. We um, don't go away football camp like some of the teams do. We do it here. I personally am a huge fan of sleeping in my own bed, uh, but we'll continue working out Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 8.15 to 10.30 for the varsity and uh, 10 to noon for our freshmen and sophomores. Um, so 
Uh, excited about all that. Uh, we do take a week off that week leading up to the 4th of July. Uh, so I think about June 24th will be our last day of lifting until July 5th. Um, and you, you obviously the one thing I will say, our numbers have been good in the weight room. Definitely been happy with that. But uh, I've, I've had a few more vacations planned from people. I think people are a little bit uh, uh, cooped up and ready to get out a little bit. So we have had a few more vacations than normal. Uh, kind of expected that with uh, people not being able to do some travel and things like that. But our numbers have still been very good. And I, I still think we're making the necessary improvements. Oh, and that's good. I, I mean, like you said, you, your numbers have been good. Guys are getting out when they can. You know, like you said, guys are probably going on vacation, doing a little bit more traveling than they did last offseason because of the pandemic, while it's still technically going on, isn't as bad as it was the last time yeah. uh, this, the offseason rolled around. But uh, I want to shift focus just a little bit, Coach, to wrestling. I know we're still a very long ways away from the winter sports season. Um, and, of course, we'll, we'll talk about wrestling with Coach Collette when we get a lot closer to that season. Uh, but, Coach, uh, you had a wrestler, Lincoln Eby, who uh, – uh, is was a phenomenal senior wrestler for you this year. Um, he earned the United States Marine Corps Male Distinguished Athlete of the Year Award, which is presented by uh, Prescott High School. That is a school award given to him. Uh, they have one for the male and the female side as well. Uh, but Lincoln was the male recipient, and he is headed to go play at Clarion University in Pennsylvania. Uh, Coach, first and foremost, what did Lincoln mean to the team this season? Uh, what have you seen from him as a leader on the team that you coached, and also just just, you know, for you yourself, I mean, how cool is it to see one of your guys get an award like that? Just, uh, he's just an outstanding young man. I really can't say enough good things about him. He's the type of guy from, from myself who has two daughters. If, you know, if 10 years down the road, they walk in with a Lincoln Eby type kid, you're going, <laughs> yes, all right. Um, that's just the type of kid he is. He's just an outstanding young man. Uh, 4.1 student. Um, was a great wrestler, was such a good leader in the room, did such a good job working with some guys, whether they were at his skill level or not. Um, really, Jackson Perkins, who ended up placing at State as a freshman, is, is outstanding as well. I think one of the main reasons he was able to, to place at State as a freshman is a great work ethic, but also uh, Lincoln kind of took him under his wing, and, and um, I, I was just so impressed. We have a very young team in wrestling, and his leadership permeated the room, so he's uh, – going to be definitely missed. He was just a great, just a great, great kid. Um, couldn't be happier to have had the opportunity to coach him and uh, really proud of his accomplishments. And I know he'll go on to do some, uh, some great things. Definitely. Yeah, again, Lincoln is headed off to uh, Clarion University in Pennsylvania. He will start his freshman year uh, this fall. So best of luck to Lincoln if you happen to be watching. Um, coach, anyone else making the jump to the college level, whether it be on the football team uh, and or on the wrestling team? Uh, Wyatt Snyder's going to St. Mary's. Um, Nate Wright and Nate Brasino had a few options. Luke McCausland had a few options. I know he got offered by Ottawa. I think he's going to a school um, in Texas, um, trying to walk on there possibly. Um, but we've had some uh, uh, some guys continue to do that. Nate Wright, our, our tremendous running back, is going on his mission. He'll be leaving uh, in August to Belize, actually. And I, I will I will definitely think he'll be playing some college football in two years when he gets back. Uh, but obviously, extremely important to him. He's go, he got his his uh, where he was going. I just saw, saw him on our passing league yesterday. He told me where he was going. I was like, that's awesome. Another another just fantastic kid. Can't say enough good things about him. Um, so we're excited for all those guys and uh, excited for the season. A good time to be a Badger as always. And we're just trying to get better every single day. Uh, Coach, uh, I know, again, we're, we're still a ways ahead of, of, of when wrestling season starts, but I'm just curious, are you holding any off-season workouts or any programs for the wrestling team? Coach Perkins is handling most of that. He has got uh, Jackson, his son, doing some stuff, and some other guys. I know Wally Stooks has been very active in the freestyle uh, circuit and those type of things. Um, but, w number one, we want to increase numbers. We want to get more football players out, so they're in there lifting with us. But those two guys – off the top of my head are guys that I know have been doing a ton of stuff. We haven't really done a lot of organized uh, activities in terms of wrestling because uh, being the, there's a lot going on football wise and what we have been doing, uh, right. which Perkins has been handling. 
Uh, I got one last question for you, Coach Collette. Again, we were speaking with Prescott High School football and wrestling coach, Coach uh, Cody Collette. Uh, I think I said coach about 15 times during that, that just that sentence alone. But uh, <laughs> Coach Collette, uh, you're, you've, you've been coaching for a while here. You, you made your return to Prescott not too long ago. You've been coaching the football team. You've been coaching the wrestling program. I'm just curious, throughout your years of holding these off-season workouts, Pandemic aside, just in general, are there any adjustments, any changes? Is this the same football camp that you would have held five years ago, or is it different now? What changes have you made in your off-season preparation that you've learned throughout your years as a coach? Well, strength conditioning-wise, that world is always evolving. Um, so we've definitely added a lot more prehab-type movements, things like that that are more preventative in nature, um, and those type of things, uh, we have adjusted a little bit of our weights program uh, to reflect that and trying to, uh, to have as much preventative stuff as possible. I have a couple of really good assistant coaches that do a really good job with that. We spend a significant more uh, time on that, uh, do a lot more ankle stuff, forearm stuff, some of those things, um, uh, trying to change direction and do it in a controlled environment. Um, really spend a lot of time, a lot more time doing that. And that's because of research and things uh, we've decided in terms of charting, how we try to keep our guys as healthy as possible. Because number one, especially at the 4A level, extremely, extremely important. I think the healthier team throughout the year has a lot better chance of advancing. There's been, there was probably some years early in my career that we had really solid teams when we got to the playoffs with a few really, and everybody has injuries those times, but I think I'm even more, cognizant of if, if we lose somebody to anything, I really, really want it to be in a, in a game, not yeah. in a practice setting or a workout session, uh, anything that we can control. We want to really do a good job with that. Uh, the, you know, football is a, is a, is a rough game. So there's going to be injuries, but we want to make sure they're not happening in practices and, and things like that. So a lot more preventative type activities. Uh, we did switch to the mornings. I used to be an afternoon guy and I, I, um, uh, did that because high school kids, most of the time, they're up playing video games till two, three o'clock in the morning. So we did our workouts in the afternoon, but we we're, we switched them in the mornings. We don't do what I call the rooster workouts. Some coaches do them fantastic. They get those guys at 6 a.m. Uh, I don't do that. I'm not those guys that do. They do a fantastic job. We come in about 8, 8, 15, and we get our work done um, that way. So still early. It's about time they start school. So it keeps them kind of on a routine. Uh, but those are some changes we've made through the years and always uh, in the coaching game, you're always trying to look for improvements. And uh, I am definitely always trying to hone my craft and find better ways to, uh, to uh, implement things. And uh, we'll continue to do that until it's going to be my 22nd year coaching high school football this coming season. And I'll be doing that till I'm done coaching, whatever that be. I'm hoping that will won't be till they're, ready to throw some dirt on me. So, <laughs> well, we're hoping the same thing, coach. We'd love to see coach Cody Collette uh, stay in that position for as long as possible and continue your coaching career. Uh, it is always great to speak with you, coach. Here's to 22 and hopefully a, a lot more around the corner. Uh, I do want to thank coach Collette for coming on. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you as always. Thanks for all you do to help uh, uh, coverage for the Northern Arizona and specifically the Grand Canyon region. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, if you want any more information about some of the summer worked out workouts we talked about, visit Prescott High School's website, go to their athletics page and uh, go into the football section of there. And you'll have all the information you need about any summer workouts coming up. The season kicks off September 3rd for the Prescott Badgers at Glendale High School. I'd like to thank all my guests for coming on the show this week. Of course, Prescott boys basketball coach Travis Stedman, Bradshaw Mountain High School girls soccer coach John Sterling and the gentleman right there on your screen or in your ears, uh, Coach Cody Collette of Prescott High School. That's going to do it for this episode of Off the Bench. We will see you next week. I'm Philip Katafimo, and we'll see you then.